Hey there, my name's Ted, and I'm here to practice video editing while rambling about stuff I like. So as if there aren't already too many animated video essayists on YouTube, welcome to Thinkster. I guess I'm a squid, I think. Kaiji, the Ultimate Survivor, is a manga by Nobuyuki Fukumoto and an anime you can watch on Crunchyroll right now. The main character, Ito Kaiji, is a gambling addict who antes up his life and limb to escape deep debt. As a squid who likes to call himself a writer, I'm inspired by Kaiji's nerve-wracking, paranoid style. It's like a dystopian version of that Yu-Gi-Oh season where the pharaohs set people on fire for daring to lose card games. If you're interested, you might want to pause my video and come back later, because I'm spoiling basically everything, even stuff from the manga which hasn't been animated yet. If you don't mind spoilers, though, Kaiji is great even if you know how everything ends. I mean, spoiler alert, the guy called the ultimate survivor makes it out alive. Kaiji's gambling scenes are expertly crafted to keep our rapt attention, but I'd like to talk about how those gambles are often thematically relevant to their surrounding narratives. I don't know if Nobuyuki Fukumoto consciously constructed Kaiji's gambles this way. I'm probably reading too much into things, but Kaiji's e-card game against Tonegawa is clearly symbolic. In e-card, emperors beat citizens, citizens beat slaves, and slaves beat emperors because slaves have nothing left to lose. That's why lowly little Kaiji can seal his victory against the overwhelming Teai Company. Taking the mechanics of the gamble as metaphor, Kaiji has an obvious edge. This gambling mechanic, the weakest option beating the strongest option, comes up again and again in Kaiji. In a dice game called, uh... Chinchirorin. Chinchirorin. What might seem like a bad roll, all ones, is actually the best roll. In one poker, the strongest card, the ace, loses to the weakest card, the two. The mechanics of the gambles reinforce the idea that Kaiji can win despite being less powerful than his opponents, and perhaps because he's less powerful than his opponents. This is a powerful narrative technique, so let's start at the beginning looking for more. The first image in the first episode and the first line of the theme song is the phrase, the future is in our hands. This announces that Kaiji's fate will be determined by his choices and the choices of others. Then, the story's first gamble is basically rock-paper-scissors using playing cards. Kaiji's hands hold a hand of cards of hands. Huh? Huh? His lowest moments here are when he puts his life in someone else's hands and is immediately and repeatedly betrayed. When Kaiji loses fingers or gets needles under his nails, it's a reminder that his destiny is in his hands, sometimes more literally than he'd like. Kaiji's second gamble, well, it's not exactly a gamble, but hey, is walking across an iron beam over a huge drop while a wealthy audience watches and mocks. This is a microcosm for every gamble in the series. Kaiji is always one mistake from death, and this time the strict, narrow path to success is a literal one. But when Kaiji's friend Sahara reaches the end of the beam, Kaiji warns him the wealthy spectators are laughing. Sure enough, when Sahara opens the window, he's blown off the beam by a gust of air. The real solution to this gamble is a nearly invisible glass staircase, showing that Kaiji can't even trust the strict, narrow path his opponents present he must scrutinize every aspect of every challenge. This gamble is a literal, physical manifestation of narrative obstacles which occur again and again, including Kaiji's only hope of salvation. We've already discussed E-Card, so let's look at the raffle against the evil CEO, Hyodo. Kaiji draws a circle on a piece of paper, which he and Hyodo put into a tissue box with hundreds of blanks. Kaiji plans to cheat, He's conspired with the audience of fellow debtors to stash another winning piece in the box's flaps. So, there are two winning pieces. Symmetrically, there are two cheaters at the table. Hyodo cheats by creasing the winning piece, and he crushes Kaiji's ace in the hole. Two winning pieces, two cheaters, a whole bunch of losing pieces, and a whole audience of losers. The gamble reflects the narrative reality. Kaiji loses because he begs God to give him the winning piece. The future is supposed to be in his hands, but he relinquishes that responsibility and suffers for it by losing fingers. Hyodo gives Kaiji the winning piece as a booby prize, but now the circle is a zero, representing Kaiji's winnings and his feelings of worthlessness. 
One more quick note on Chinchidoden. The dice game's peculiar odd-one-out method of determining the value of a roll reflects the arc's antagonists, who work in a trio to slip their foreman trick dice. The foreman is the odd-one-out promoted by his two henchmen. Kaiji and his loser friends win by virtue of their uniformity in failure. Moving on to Pachinko, sneaking Pachinko balls through a series of obstacles mirrors Kaiji's own miraculous survival up to this point, but just like his pachinko balls, Kaiji is blocked from success at the last minute. When Kaiji finally sinks one ball in the jackpot, a whole bunch of balls fall after it. Appropriately, Kaiji isn't gambling just for himself here. All his friends underground are liberated alongside him, just like the winning pachinko ball admits a flood of others. Next, in the manga, Kaiji plays Minefield Mahjong. I don't know how to play even regular Mahjong, but the imagery is obvious enough. Kaiji and his opponent alternate taking steps by discarding tiles, and might step on a mine by discarding exactly the tile their opponent needs to win. More interesting to me is the setting. There's space for four chairs, but only Kaiji and his opponent sit down. The two empty chairs represent the two characters helping Kaiji and his opponent cheat on each other. Kaiji wins by doctoring a tile placed before an empty chair, using this symbolic partner to claim victory. After Kaiji plays Mahjong, in the Salvation game, three friends are tasked with an iterated logic puzzle. Hyodo's evil son Kazuya explains the significance. Kazuya wants to show Kaiji that people are ultimately self-centered, and he invents a gamble to prove it by making friends betray each other. I would argue Kazuya loses in principle. One friend betrays the others only because Kazuya meddles and violates the integrity of the gamble. Just like the first friend in line has to trust the two friends behind them, and the second friend in line has to trust the friend in back, all three friends have to trust Kazuya and are ultimately at Kazuya's mercy. The structure of the gamble shows that Kazuya believes humans are self-centered only because he himself is the common thread connecting all the gambles he's overseen. Luckily, Kaiji is the fifth man in the gamble, and when Kazuya trusts Kaiji to act selfishly, Kaiji betrays Kazuya's expectations by bailing out the losers. In one poker, Kaiji and Kazuya gamble lives worth 200 million yen and red lives representing their actual executions by 50-foot drop. Not only does Kazuya love gambling lives, he also thinks lives can be reduced to money, the average salary. Kazuya starts with far more lives, demonstrating his inherent advantage of wealth. He also hides aces, representing the same advantage metaphorically. He hides aces on Kaiji's side as well, but Kaiji has to realize their presence and discover how to access them, revealing Kazuya's twisted notion of economic fairness. More importantly, in previous scenes, Kaiji said Kazuya would be haunted by ghosts of the people he's killed and this turns out to be symbolically true. Kaiji gambles his own red life and loses, but the losers he saved from the Salvation game stop his execution. So when Kaiji raises the stakes with all three of their red lives, Kazuya is up against the lives of people who had already died, aka ghosts. Kazuya tries Kaiji's signature trick, beating an ace with a two. But as a multimillionaire, Kazuya isn't in a thematic position to pull it off. Kaiji beats Kazuya's two with a three, a three representing the lowly trio. When Kazuya is about to be dropped to his death, he puts his future in Kaiji's hands by giving him the button which stops a swinging net which might catch Kazuya midair. Kaiji fails to net Kazuya, but catches him in his own money tarp, poetically reminding the reader of Kazuya's sudden poverty. There's more kaiji after that, but it's enough to see that even as each gamble's mechanics create the narrative, the gambles also reflect the narrative, whether intentionally or not. While we're enthralled moment to moment by the threat of death, mutilation, or bankruptcy, we're carried issue to issue and episode to episode by the symbiosis between the gambles and the narratives surrounding them. I always try to dig a little too deep into stories I like to see what makes them tick. So thanks for watching. It helps me pretend I know what I'm talking about. If you think I'm neat, check out my writing on ted-writes.com, or subscribe and maybe I'll post again soon. And go watch Kaiji on Crunchyroll, it's loads of fun. 
Bye bye. Aga keva, aga ki odoni.